Hi and welcome to Outdoor World Direct. Today we're going to take a look at the Outdoor Evolution Airedale 7SE Family Tent. The Airedale collection has become a really popular range of family tents over the years and the 7SE is probably the most popular um, apart from the 9 in the range. Before we start it's worth saying it's quite a bulky pack size, it's quite a large tent. So the pack size on this tent is 93 centimetres by 63 by 56 centimetres. It's also just short of 48 kilograms, so it does ideally need one or two of you to lift it into the car and out of the car. Um, one person on their own, it, it can be done, but it's a bit of a struggle, so it is easier if there's two of you uh, lifting it in and out of the car. Um, also, with it being quite a hefty pack size, it's also worth checking it will actually fit in the car boot with all the other accessories that you might want to take on your camping holiday. So the Airedale is a, a really popular tent and the reason for that is because it hits a, a lot of the key things that people want out of the tent and it hits great price point as well. Uh, the other reason why it's become so popular, the 7SE in particular, is this side annex that they've put on the side which I'll come to shortly. The tent itself has got a 240 HDE polyester fabric which is a lightweight but quite robust fabric for a family tent so it's much much stronger than something like a 70 denier tent. It probably hits around 150 denier as a um, as a thickness rating. Uh, further to this it's got a 4000 millimeter hydrostatic head which is again quite a high um, waterproofing column. Another important feature as to why the Airedale collection of tents have become so popular is their inflatable design. Um, the Airedale 7SE it has very thick and strong beams. The Airedales probably have the thickest, strongest beams in the family tent market. Um, they really give you a lot of confidence and reinsurance in terms of the structure when you see them pitched in the flesh and see how thick and strong the beams are. Um, they're all individual beams, so they're not linked together, so that means that you inflate each one individually. Um, which is a bit of a benefit if you do suffer a deflation because if you do have a, um, a puncture you can just swap that individual beam out very quickly easily with a spare tube. Uh, further to this there's something called intelligent frame relief on this uh, tent. What that is is if the uh, tube over expands or if you put too much air into the tube it naturally will allow some air back out of a second valve so you can't over inflate it and if the tube expands in heat it will let any excess air out which avoids any uh, issues that you might have with hot climates and hot weather. You actually get a lifetime guarantee on the air tube so you can get if you do have an issue you can get it replaced by the manufacturer but you do need to register your purchase within seven days. So the Airedale 7 sc it has this great side annex already built onto the side of the tent. So you've got your seven person in a tent inside, but if you want to use this annex as an optional sleeping space, you can actually purchase an additional two person sleeping compartment, which fits and clips into this space here to the side. Alternately, you can use it for storage. Um, it's a great area to, to you know, put any um, things like bikes or, or things like that that you want to keep inside the tent out of view. Um, it actually has an entry and exit point just here. Um, and we have a mesh ventilation point just under here to reduce any condensation build up inside the tent. Um, it always has to be pitched with the tent because it's built on so it's not something you can just leave dormant to the side of the tent. It's important to pitch it out for the tent's waterproofing and structure and it just has a simple steel tubular pole system here. This is the only pole on the tent, the rest are all air tubes uh, but this pole will take just a, a minute to insert it and peg it into the ground here. With the Airedale being such a large family tent, it does have a free zone design. And what I mean by free zones is we have this front porch area to the tent. We have the sewing living space just in the middle here. And then we have the sleeping pods to the rear of the tent. So this area is what we call like the wet room. Uh, and what we mean by that, it's a good area to put like muddy boots or wet clothing after a day's walking, uh, just to dry out and not affect the... And uh, this is a good area for that kind of storage space that you might want to use it for. It's also really good if you want to, you know, put some chairs in here and have it as a socialisation area. Um, if you want to cook in here, obviously I don't particularly recommend cooking in tents. It's not the best idea in the world. Uh, but if you do get caught out by the weather and the weather's bad, um, it's probably the best place to cook because you've got plenty of space in here. You can open the doors for some airflow and ventilation. And you actually have a mesh panel on this window here. Uh, the mesh panel will allow any condensation to escape there. It's also backed by a window as well which sips up to cover the mesh panel so if it's raining you can cover this mesh panel, you're not going to get water ingress from it. Uh, obviously we've got the door open on two sides at the moment but the door is really configurable in different ways. 
Um, so you can either completely enclose it if the weather's really bad, if it's wet and windy, you might just want to close the door down completely or in the evening when you're going to sleep. Uh, you can have it just with one door to the side open like where I'm stood and then close the other side. You can completely fold the door back and roll it back here uh, on the other side. It's really versatile so you can do what you want with this door. Um, these windows are tinted PVC windows uh, so they actually reflect the light a little bit so if uh, you're on the campsite you'll be able to just directly look into the tent because they're, they're tinted windows so they're not easy to see through. They're also backed by um, zipped privacy curtains so a lot of tents in this third zone this porch area they don't put zipped curtains because uh, it's considered like an auxiliary area of the tent but without the revolution another great reason to buy them you get so much more for your money you're getting zipped curtains in all this area here so the last point to the front of the tent uh, there is actually a zip uh, pelmet along the top of the tent here um, this is actually for a front awning uh, we sell an awning that's um, compatible with this tent so it just sips onto the front to create a, a secure connection and it gives you an additional porch living space so if you want to make the tent even bigger obviously you'll be able to zip back this door and you'll be able to zip on a porch um, to make it come out even further to make it even bigger than the tent already is now typically I, I would say it doesn't really need it because it's a huge family tent uh, but the porch extension is quite popular so obviously people do want more and more living space one final point to the porch area is the tent comes with a ground sheet for this area. It's not an optional extra that you have to purchase. It's a ground sheet that comes with the tent and you can clip it in into this space and seal it from the elements if you so wish to, or you can leave it out as we have. Okay, so we take a look at the interior of the tent. Uh, this is a massive interior living space we've got here for this tent, but it is designed to sleep up to seven people. So you do need a lot of space in here. Um, the two air tubes give it a great height throughout so you can see that I'm not touching the beam here and I'm nearly right in the corner so it gives you great height throughout the tent. Um, firstly what I would point out is we've got mesh uh, windows to the front here to my left and to my right. These mesh windows are really good for getting some airflow in to the tent just to reduce any condensation you might encounter. With, with polyester tents you're going to get condensation in this sewn in living space area. The reason is because polyester tents are so highly waterproof as hard as it is for the water to get in to the tent it's also quite hard for any moisture that's built up inside the tent to escape now the reason this happens is because uh, people while we're sleeping we're emitting a pint of water each per night per person so if you have four people in here that's up to four pints of moisture in the air now if that moisture can't get out the tent easily then it's, it's got nowhere to go and it's going to cling to typically the air tubes so sometimes what you'll find in, in your polyester air tent is you will get a little bit of condensation rising up the beams um, in the mornings when you wake up so to try and alleviate this issue, because it's always been an issue with polyester tents, we've put more mesh windows in. So we put a mesh window here, we put a mesh window here, and the idea is that you know we're getting lots of airflow into this tent, which helps minimise condensation because it helps dry it out. Um, the other thing as well is that we have uh, zipped privacy curtains on this. So if you do want to enclose and cover these mesh windows, you can do so. If we look to my left, we actually have a door panel here. Um, so this is a waterproof fly sheet door. Um, we also have a secondary zip mesh panel door as well. So again, if you want to get some airflow into the tent without the bugs getting in, you can open the waterproof door and you can close the mesh fly sheet door and that will create a nice airflow into the tent without the risk of bugs uh, getting into the tent. We also have a tinted PVC window here, again with a zipped privacy curtain. Uh, the other thing that you'll notice with these beams is we tend to hang lighting and accessories from them. So you, there's a couple of accessories you might want for this tent. Firstly, they've put Velcro strips just where I am here. And the idea of these Velcro strips is you can get an accessory called an up-down lighter. So if you want some softer lighting in here, you can get just like a little light holder. It sits there and then you can put a little lantern inside and it creates a really nice cozy feeling inside the tent. Alternately, you can do what we've done and get a strip light um, and then just tie it on using the Velcro ties that come on each beam. Um, so that's really helpful as well if you want to light the tent up. So quickly looking at the rest of the interior living space. Um, so we're looking more towards the right hand side of the tent at the moment. So at, on the right hand side here at the footer we've got a cable entry point. That cable entry point is perfect for adding a mobile mains kit uh, for some electrical um, 
of the tent. So you can just thread the cable through there. It's a zip port um, and you then can light up your tent. You can charge your devices. You can, you've got electric inside the tent basically. Um, also to my right, we've got a window panel. <laughs> Again, it's a tinted window uh, and it's got a privacy curtain to zip up of an evening. Uh, this area here, you can actually add a two person inner to this space here, to the front. However, typically if you're gonna add another inner tent, I'd put it in the annex, I wouldn't put it here because this is gonna disrupt the main living space of the tent. Uh, you can see here we've actually put a carpet inside this one. The carpets are really good because they just take the cold edge off the ground. So if you're an early season camper or a late season camper when the weather's a little bit colder, um, the carpet just helps um, take the cold edge off the ground. Okay, so this side annex area is very, very popular and it probably is the reason why the Airedale has just become an overwhelming success really. It just gives you that side area to the tent that a lot of people typically buy a side extension for. It's just a great storage area or it's a great area to put that optional in a tent. Um, it has a door, um, so there is an entry exit point as we've mentioned. Just on the door, uh, it's not sealed to the ground sheet, so there is a small gap between the door and the ground sheet. It shouldn't be impacted by the weather because it clips, the ground sheet actually clips up to the door to create a seal, um, but it's not a fully sealed area, so if, if you want a 100% seal from the bugs, um, that door doesn't give you that. But a lot of doors on tents don't give you that because they just drop flat, so um, there's always a gap for the bugs to get in, and that's typically one. Um, it's just worth pointing out. Also, you can actually enclose this area off um, by using this door uh, to fully enclose this area off if you so wish to. And the last thing is there's a hanging rail. So if you want to hang any wet clothes, stuff like that, or if you want to use this as an area to store your clothes, uh, this is a good spot uh, to do it because you've got the actual hanging rail. To finish off, we've got the sleeping area. So this area is a seven man. Uh, sleeping compartment. It's all one compartment. As you can see, it quips in and quips out if you want to um, remove it, but you can just leave this pitched inside the tent. Um, it, it won't cause any damage when you pack the tent down. Uh, when you first get your tent, you will probably have to clip this in because I think it comes separately and you just clip it in. Um, so these are actually quite a deep sleeping area, which is great because you can put camp beds in them um, facing out towards, towards the camera. Uh, in the tents are only two 10 centimetre depth, which means a camp bed won't fit that way, it has to go sideways. Uh, so these, these are great because you can put the camp bed in without having to put it sideways. Uh, I think there are 235 to 240 centimetre depth, so that gives you plenty of internal space. Again, you've got uh, mesh panels on them just to aid breathability again. Uh, and the, obviously they're all zipped closed doors. So once you're inside there, it's quite a dark area. It's not a blackout like some tents have, but it's a very dark inner, so it will minimize um, early morning sunshine, stuff like that. Uh, the other thing to point out as well is that e in between each um, sleeping area, there's actually a divider. There's two zip dividers. So we've got one here and we've got one here. So you've got the large central sleeping area, which is typically gonna sleep up to three people. And then you've got the two, two person inners here um, so it makes up to a seven. Uh, you can actually zip these compartments back and fold them away to make it a larger open space or you can go for like a two and five configuration or you can leave it two, three, two. It just totally depends on how you want to use the space really. Um, and as we've already mentioned you know there's other optional inners if you want to put more in around the tent. Finally, I want to run through the optional extras that you can buy for this tent. There's a lot of different products that can enhance the living space, that can um, give you extra sleeping space. So I'll start with the front. There's actually a zip on front canopy, which was mentioned earlier. That zips onto the front. It adds an extra canopy space. Um, if we go to the other side of the tent, there's a side Airedale side porch. Uh, so that's a side extension that can fit onto the other door on the other side of the tent. There is a footprint ground sheet. You should always look to buy a footprint ground sheet. That will cover this sewn in area from here. It'll cover the annex and all the way to the back of the tent. And the, the beauty of the footprint ground sheet is it'll allow you to pack the tent away dry at the end of the camping trip. It will also stop any underneath. Um, so if you're camping on a hard standing pit, you definitely want a footprint so you don't damage the sewn in ground sheet because obviously with the ground sheet being sewn in, if it gets damaged, you can't replace it. So having a footprint is really important and you should always look to purchase one on a tent this size. Um, we then have the rug, which fits into the living space, which I showed you before. 
There's also a Skyliner or a roof cover as sometimes they call it. The Skyliner sits inside the tent and it covers the beams um, and it just clips in along the roof panel and that will reduce the condensation. Uh, finally, there's two inner tents available, as I've mentioned. There's one that you can put just inside this living space of the tent here, or there's one that can go in the side annex area. Um, so it's a very versatile tent. You've got plenty of optional extras if you so wish to purchase them. You can usually find them on the bundle deals on our website, um, so you can kind of configure and buy whichever bundle you want with it, whichever accessory. So to recap on this tent, it sleeps seven people quite a high quality polyester fabric so it's more of a premium family tent uh, due to the fabric and the waterproofing which is 4,000 millimeters it's got tons and bags of living space you know you're not going to get too many tents bigger than this you've got the side annex area built on there's many optional extras uh, it's a really great tent uh, it's, it's great value for money if you put this up against other brands with a similar size tent you know you're probably talking two or three hundred pounds cheaper compared with rival brands so you get great value for money with this tent and it's very very customizable with all the optional additions that you have.